the three categories of delusions. The explanation of the three categories of delusions consists of three parts. First, clarification of deluded views and attitudes. Next, clarification of the minute delusions. And last, interpretation of the delusion of ignorance. Clarification of deluded views and attitudes. First, the clarification of deluded views and attitudes. Question. Does this refer to deluded views and attitudes, or to deluded views dash attitudes? Answer. It means deluded views and attitudes. Question. What is the meaning of deluded views? Answer. Views refers to views concerning reality. The views themselves are not identical to delusion. When the views are in accordance with reality, then delusions are severed. Deluded views are so named in accordance with understanding or lack of it. However, they are also named not simply in accordance with understanding. They are also so called on the basis of their essence. This means that they are called views when they are not in accordance with reality are definitely mistaken discriminations, and are clearly one-sided views. These are what are named deluded views. Question. How many kinds of these deluded views are there? Answer. In general, there are four. One, four single views. Two, four plural views. Three, four inclusive views. And four, four nonverbal views. Question. What is the meaning of the four single views? Answer. Attachment to substantial being. Attachment to nothingness. Attachment to both being and nothingness. And attachment to neither being nor nothingness. Question. Through what ways do these attachments arise? Answer. There are many ways for attachments to arise, but they can be explained with reference to a mistaken belief in a substantial self. Question. How many types of cravings are included in the first deluded view of being? Answer. There are 88 afflictions and cravings. Question. What are these 88 afflictions and cravings? Answer. There are 32 afflictions of the realm of desire, 28 of the realm of form, and the same, that is, 28 for the formless realm. Question. What are the distinct names for the thirty-two afflictions of the realm of desire, and so forth? Answer. As for the realm of desire, there are ten afflictions that correspond to the truth of suffering. One, the affliction of covetous desires. Two, the affliction of hatred. Three, the affliction of stupidity. Four, the affliction of arrogance. Five, the affliction of doubt. 6. The affliction of the mistaken view of a self. 7. The affliction of extreme views. 8. The affliction of heretical views. 9. The affliction of attachment to these views. And 10. The affliction of attachment to precepts. There are 7 that correspond to the truth of the causes of suffering. The above 10, except for the mistaken view of a self. Extreme views and deluded views stemming from attachment to precepts. There are also seven that correspond to the truth of extinction, the same as those for the truth of the causes of suffering. There are eight that correspond to the truth of the path, the above ten except for the mistaken view of a self and extreme views. Therefore, there are thirty-two. For the realm of form, there are twenty-eight afflictions, there are nine afflictions that correspond to the truth of suffering. The above ten, except for hatred. There are six afflictions that correspond to the truth of the causes of suffering. The above ten, except for hatred, mistaken view of a self, extreme views, and deluded views stemming from attachment to precepts. There are six afflictions that correspond to the truth of extinction. Again, the same as the truth of the causes of suffering. There are seven afflictions that correspond to the truth of the path. The above ten, except for hatred, the mistaken view of a self, and extreme views. Therefore, there are twenty-eight afflictions for the realm of form. The formless realm 
is the same as the realm of form. Question. What are those afflictions from that named the affliction of covetous desires to that called views stemming from attachment to precepts? Answer. To be attracted and attached to something without becoming weary is named having covetous desires. An angry and spiteful mind is named hatred. To be deluded and imperfect is named the affliction of stupidity. To be confident in oneself and take others lightly is named the affliction of arrogance. To be skeptical and uncertain is named the affliction of doubt. To discriminate falsely a substantial self in the midst of the senses, their organs and objects, and act according to this false discrimination is named the view of a self. A mind that is attached to extremes is named extreme views. To accept heretical thought as true is named heretical views. To view as true that which is false is named attachment to views. To accept as precepts those things that are not real precepts is called the view of attachment to precepts. Question. Why are they all called cravings or tormenting scourges? Answer. They are tormenting because they are vociferous torments, and they are scourges because they are oppressive troubles. Question. Why are they called afflictions? Answer. They are called afflictions due to their domineering oppressiveness. These cravings or tormenting scourges constantly oppress the mind and spirit of the practitioner who is swirling through the cyclic existence of this triple world. Question. Are all of these eighty-eight afflictions sharp afflictions, or are they all dull afflictions? Answer. Fifty-two of the afflictions are dull, and thirty-six are sharp. Question. All of the deluded views should be sharp afflictions. Why do they include some dull afflictions? Answer. The delusions of dull afflictions contain both illusion concerning reality and illusion concerning phenomenal appearances. Here, only the extreme of illusion concerning reality is included. Question. When are deluded views and attitudes severed? Answer. One severs the delusion of illusion concerning reality at the time of recognizing the validity of the Four Noble Truths, and one severs the delusion of illusion concerning phenomenal appearances at the time of cultivating the path. Insight and cultivation are not the same, and reality and phenomenal appearances are also different. Question. Are these eighty-eight afflictions and the sixty-two mistaken views the same or different? Answer. One incorporates each of the eighty-eight afflictions by considering the sixty-two mistaken views. It is also said that the sixty-two mistaken views are the same as including all extreme views. Question. What are the distinctive names of the sixty-two mistaken views? Answer. There are various interpretations of this. To give one meaning, there are sixty-two mistaken views in considering the triple world and five aggregates. Question. How many attachments are there? Answer. With reference to the five aggregates of the past, there are the four possibilities of the tetralemma. With reference to the present and future, there are the four possibilities of the tetralemma for each. Question. What are the four possibilities of the tetralemma for the past, and the four possibilities of the tetralemma for the present and future? Answer. The four possibilities of the tetralemma for the past are 1. Thus gone. 2. Not thus gone. 3. Both thus gone and not thus gone. And 4. Neither thus gone nor not thus gone. With reference to the five aggregates, there are twenty-five aggregates. The four possibilities of the tetralemma for the present are 1. Eternal 2. Transient 3. Both eternal and transient and 4. 
neither eternal nor transient. These also have twenty-five aggregates. The four possibilities of the tetralemma for the future are one, the extreme of being, two, the extreme of nothingness, three, both the extreme of being and the extreme of nothingness, and four, neither the extreme of being nor the extreme of nothingness. These also have twenty-five aggregates. The three times, past, present, and future, combined together, make sixty mistaken views. There are sixty-two by adding the two mistaken views of annihilation and eternalism. Also, there are the sixty-two mistaken views categorized in the Fan Wang Ching as the past eighteen mistaken views and the future forty-four mistaken views. The singular view of being is abbreviated in this way. The view of nothingness, both being and nothingness, and neither being nor nothingness, are each likewise. There are also the four plural views, the four inclusive views, and the four nonverbal views. These are explained in the commentary, the Moho Chi Quan, so I shall not give a protracted explanation here. Next is the clarification of diluted attitudes. First, I shall clarify the meaning of attitude, and later interpret how it fosters delusions. Question. Why are they called diluted attitudes? Answer. They are called diluted attitudes because these delusions are severed through the severance of conceptual attitudes and considered rationalization. Question. Which delusions are signified by the term conceptual attitudes? Answer. The afflictions of covetousness, hatred, stupidity, and arrogance. These four afflictions are called conceptual attitudes. Question. How many kinds of these cravings are there? Answer. In short, there are ten. Broadly speaking, there are eighty-one degrees. Question. What are their names? Answer. The ten are as follows. Four, covetousness, hatred, stupidity, and arrogance, correspond to the realm of desire. Three, the above four minus hatred, correspond to the realm of form. The same three correspond to the formless realm. The eighty-one degrees are as follows. The three realms consist of nine stages. Each of the nine stages has nine degrees, so together there are eighty-one degrees. Question. What are the nine stages of the three realms? Answer. The realm of desire consists of one stage. The realm of form consists of four stages, and the formless realm consists of four stages. Together they make nine stages. Question. What are the nine degrees of each stage of these nine stages? Answer. In each and every stage there are three degrees, intense, moderate, and mild. Each of these three degrees also has three degrees. Thus, each stage consists of the degrees of extremely intense, moderately intense, mildly intense, intensely moderate, moderately moderate, mildly moderate, intensely mild, moderately mild, and mildly mild. Thus, there are nine times nine degrees of the nine stages for a total of eighty-one degrees. This is a list of their names. Further interpretation is in the commentary, namely the Moho Chi Quan. Next, the interpretation of how it fosters delusion. Question. How many delusions are fostered by the nine degrees of cravings in the realm of desire? Answer. They foster seven. Question. Why do the delusions that do the fostering number nine degrees, while the delusions that are fostered number only seven? Answer. The one extremely intense degree fosters two delusions. The three degrees of moderately intense, mildly intense, and intensely moderate each foster one. The moderately moderate and mildly moderate together foster one. The three mild degrees together foster one. 
The content of the two higher realms is explained in detail in the commentary, the Moho Chi Quan. Clarification of the Minute Delusions Question. What is the meaning of minute delusions? Answer. The prevalence of ignorance is very great. Therefore, they are called minute. Question. How does one interpret this minuteness? Answer. There are many methods of clarifying this issue. One method is to classify it into five parts. 1. The disease of deluded views and attitudes. 2. The basis of deluded views and attitudes. 3. The causes and conditions for the arising of deluded views and attitudes. 4. The time for the arising of deluded views and attitudes. And 5. Many layered deluded views and attitudes. Question. Laying aside for now the first four, what is the meaning of many layered deluded views and attitudes? Answer. The three conventionalities emerge in response to the first mistaken view of being, the four possibilities of the tetralemma, and practices for oneself and for saving others emerge in response to the three conventionalities. Thus, their number is immeasurable. The mistaken view of being is like this. How much more so the mistaken views of nothingness, both being and nothingness, and neither being nor nothingness. They are incalculable, so they are called minute. Further clarification can be found in the commentary, the Moho Chi Quan, so I shall refrain from explaining it exhaustively. Clarification of the Delusion of Ignorance Question. What is properly signified as ignorance? Answer. The wisdom obstacle is properly signified as ignorance. Question. What does this mean? Answer. The two wisdoms attained from contemplating emptiness and conventional existence that seek the wisdom of the middle should be called the wisdom obstacle. Question. Why is that called the wisdom obstacle? Answer. There are three interpretations in understanding this wisdom obstacle. 1. It is called wisdom obstacle because wisdom acts as an obstacle. 2. It is an obstacle because wisdom is being obstructed. 3. It is called wisdom obstacle because it refers to both the obstacle and that which is obstructed. Question. What wisdom is acting as an obstacle? Answer. The wisdoms attained from contemplating emptiness and conventional existence both destroy delusions. Therefore, they are called wisdom. However, now the middle path is sought, and these wisdoms in turn produce delusion. These obstruct the attainment of the wisdom of the middle. Therefore, they are called wisdom obstacles. They receive their name from the fact that they act as obstacles. Also, since these wisdoms obstruct the wisdom of the middle, they are obstacles to wisdom. Since this wisdom of the middle is being obstructed, they are called wisdom obstacles. Also, the delusions are an obstacle, and that which is being obstructed is the wisdom of the middle. Therefore, it is called the wisdom obstacle. The wisdom obstacle refers to both the obstacle and that which is obstructed. At the first level of interpretation, both parts of the term wisdom obstacle correspond to an active obstacle. At the second level of interpretation, both parts of the term wisdom obstacle correspond to the object of obstruction. At the third level of interpretation, the term wisdom corresponds to the object of obstruction and the term obstacle to the act of obstruction. Question. Cravings refer to the mind of delusion. Only they should be called obstacles. Wisdom refers to the dharma of clear understanding. How can there be wisdom that is an obstacle? Answer. There are two kinds of wisdom. The wisdom based on consciousness discriminates penetrates the essence of reality, and is in conformity with certain marks of reality. It is called wisdom because it is in conformity with certain marks.
It is called wisdom because it penetrates to the essence and is in conformity with certain marks. However, if one penetrates to the essence by discriminating, this wisdom based on consciousness becomes an obstacle to more profound insight. Therefore, it is explained as an obstacle. Question. Although I have now heard this explanation, it is not yet clear. What is the gist? Answer. The wisdom of enlightenment is the wisdom of the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas. Wisdom based on discriminative consciousness is the wisdom of those of the two vehicles. The wisdom of those of the two vehicles, though it can be called wisdom, is not yet in full accordance with true reality, so its meaning is closer to that of discriminative consciousness. It is able to destroy cravings, so in that sense it should be called wisdom. In being different from the essence of reality and so forth, it is interpreted merely as the wisdom based on discriminative consciousness. This wisdom is different from the essence of reality, therefore it is called different in essence. This wisdom is in conformity with the marks of the two vehicles, therefore it is called in conformity with certain marks of reality. It is in conformity with the wisdom of the two vehicles, but it is different from the wisdom of the Buddha. Since it obstructs the wisdom of the Buddha, it is called a wisdom obstacle. Question. Concerning the delusion of ignorance, there are two different varieties, that of the worldly and that of the transworldly. Which ignorance are you referring to in speaking of a wisdom obstacle? Answer. The Juta Cheng Lun, or Introduction to the Mahayana, says, quote, Transworldly ignorance is the wisdom obstacle. The wise sages are already detached from worldly ignorance. Close quote. Details concerning ignorance as the two varieties of A. Illusion concerning phenomenal appearances and B. Illusion concerning reality and the delusions that arise alongside of or independent of cravings at the time of sowing or at the time of fruition, these are all discussed in the text the Moho Chi Quan, so I shall not go into details here. 